Greetings, friend. I'm going to show you how to solve this puzzle from round five of the Sudoku Grand Prix by using hidden pairs. Not only that, I'm going to give away some of my other neat tips, tricks, and strategies as I solve this puzzle. Click below if you want to give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. First thing you might notice is you got this eight right here in column one, eight in column three, and this eight come across row four. So there's only one place for an eight here in block four, and we can mark it right there. Then with these two eights and the eight in column nine, we can solve for an eight right here in block six. Okay, switch to the nines, you got a nine in row seven, a nine in row eight, and there's only one place for nine here in block seven. Nice. Now, what I want you to see is you got this five, nine pair here in column five. And what you'll notice is that now the five, nine can only be in two places here in block five. That makes them a hidden pair. And I'm going to highlight that and mark the five, nine. So what is a hidden pair? A hidden pair is when the same two cans can only be in the same two possible cells within a house, which is a row, column, or block. Since the five and nine cannot be anywhere else in block five, except for these two orange cells, they form a hidden pair. And so you can get rid of every other possibility to go in these cells. So like you can't put a three here, you can't put uh, any other candidate, but five or nine. And this is gonna help us do some solves. I'm gonna keep this highlighted because it gives us more restriction in row five and in block five. So you notice now with this five, nine, we have a one, three, seven possibility here in block five. Since you have a one and seven right here, this has to be a three. Nice, we can solve that three. And then we can start looking for more places to solve for uh, these eights here. So now you might notice if you look in column five, where can an eight be, right? It can't be here or here because of these two eights. Can't be here or here because of this eight. And it can't be here because of this eight. So we can solve this cell for an eight. If you know there's a one seven right here and you have the three, five, and nine, that means all the odd digits are taken a spot here in column five. So that leaves us with a two, four, and a six, because we already have the eight right there. Well, if I have a four and a six right here in row nine, that means this has to be your two. And with the four right here in row one, this has to be your six, which leaves the four to go right there. And if you're just not familiar with the terms like hidden pair and naked pair, naked singles, I cover all that. I give you definitions, I give you diagrams for you to solve, and videos to back up your learning in my free Sudoku solving guide. I'll put a link to it in the pinned comment below. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies. You will solve these championship competitive Sudokus even better. Okay, let's finish these eights off. I got an eight here in row seven and nine. I have this eight in column nine. So that means the only place left for an eight in block nine is right there. And then with these two eights and these two eights, we can solve for an eight right here. And we've taken care of all of the eights. Now let's turn our attention to the sixes. I got a six here in row one and two. I have this six in column nine. Only one place left for six is right here in block three. And what we're doing is cross hatching. You know, you're looking across the rows and the columns, and you're seeing where there's going to be one hidden single remaining. And that you know you can solve when you find that. All right, what else can we do with these sixes? This six and the six here and this six cutting across row six, we can put a six in block six. Okay, and these two sixes, the six in column three, you can mark a six right here, only leaves one place for a six in block seven. And then if you see how the six comes down, column four and across row eight and nine, we can solve for a six right there. And we got rid of all the sixes. Something else you need to know, you see how you're filling up this column? and we have five candidates filled in, you notice the seven is already in block one. So seven can't be in any of those three cells. We can solve this cell for seven right away, pretty quick. Another way to look at it is you could look at this seven coming down, 
leaving a seven in one of these two possibilities. So then you know a seven can't be in any of these spots. But whenever you see something like this, just make that solve right away. It's going to be really quick for you. And now with these two sevens, we can solve for the seven right here. And you remember this was a seven one pair. So we can solve for that one right away. And now let's look for another hidden single. Let's look here in column eight. We're going to four go. Well, it can't be in these two spots because of this four. Can't be here because of this four, and it can't be here because of this four. This has to be a four. All right, so after we solve that, then we can use the four in row seven and row nine and this four to solve a four right here in block eight. Nice. And then with these two fours and the four in column one, we can solve for four up here. And now we haven't quite solved all the fours. There's still two possibilities here and here. We'll get back to those. Let's look at where a two can be down here. You see, you got a two cutting across here. You got a two cutting across here. So that means the two can only be in this spot in block nine. And this is nice. You notice how you have the five nine here? Well, that means there's only two empty cells that we're trying to solve right now, which is the two and the four. Since we just solved the two right here, this has to be your four and that has to be your two. So that's the power of that hidden pair working for us again. And now with these twos, there's only one place for two in block one, which we can solve right there. And with this two cutting across and this two coming up, we can solve for two right here. Nice. And then you might notice how the five cuts across row two and it leaves only one place for a five. So we can solve for the five right there. Really nice. Okay. See how the nine cuts across here and this nine comes up. We can solve for a nine in block one. And what you might notice too is there's seven candidates now filled, seven digits filled here in column two, which leaves us with just a five and a three. Well, we just solved this five, so I know I can solve this for the five, solve that for the three, which leaves this to be a one. Whenever you have eight candidates filled out, the last remaining digit, that's called a full house. You can guarantee you can solve that. And I can tell you right here, we're gonna be able to solve this cell with certainty, because we know these three cells are locked, and it's a naked triple here in block three. It has to be a one, three, or a seven. And we can actually solve all three of those right now. And here's how. See how the seven has to be somewhere here in column nine. But since it's in block six, it can't be any of those two cells. This has to be your seven. And since we have a one right here, the one can't be in this cell. It has to be right there. And this has to be your three. And so now we can actually finish this full house and solve this cell for a nine. And what that's going to do for us is allow us to solve our nice hidden pair. So now that's a five and that's a nine. You see how much help we got from that? That worked with us all the way around until we got to this point. And so when you're doing these competitive Sudokus, it is worth filling in some of these hidden pairs and naked pairs because you can make plenty of solves from them as they block out some of those cells like they did here in row five. And then it's easy just to erase one of them when you figure out where it is and you can erase one of those candidates and it'll solve that cell for the X candidate. I'm still working on my speed with the pencil solving because the Grand Prix, you do have to use paper and pencil to solve it. Uh, but I, this is one of those tricks I'm using that's been very helpful to me. Okay, looking for a one and a three to finish column nine. We got a one cross here. So this has to be your one. And I got to get out of color mode. That's your one. And that's going to be your three. Nice. And then we can look. And it looks like we need... Three and a five here. Well, I just solved the three in block six. So that's your five, and that's your three. And now, since this two cuts across row four, that's got to be your two, and that's going to be your nine. And then with these two nines and this nine, we're going to solve for a nine right here. So we're going to do some more cross hatching and try to just get to the rest of the puzzle. We got all the nines taken care of. I do see a full house here, so I know I can solve this cell for a three. Now let's see if we can do. Anything else with the threes? Not with the threes right away, but I bet we can make some more progress here. It looks like we need a four or a five. I got my four here. So this is going to be your four, and that's going to be your five. Nice. And now we saw those two fours that we were looking for before. And we're looking for across row three here is we're missing a two and a seven. I got my two here. So here's your two, and there's your seven. Okay. Looks like we got all the twos taken care of. Now we're looking for a one and a three here. Can't solve that just yet. We're looking for, looks like a five and a seven there. Can't solve that just yet. How about, if we look right here, we need, looks like 
five and seven. I'm trying to get something I can just solve pretty easy. And this is one's gonna be the, the way to do it. Okay. There's not a one yet in column one. So that's gotta be your one. This has gotta be your three. Now with these two threes, we can solve for the three here. Solve for the three here, solve for the one there. Because I remember that was a one three up there. And now we need a one in block eight. That's the only place for it. So we can solve for that one right there. Now we can make the rest of the progress that we need to solve the remaining bit of this puzzle. This is a full house, so it has to be a seven. There's no seven in block nine, because and this seven cuts across. So that's gotta be your seven. This is gonna be your five. Great. I don't see a five in block eight, so that's gotta be your five. I don't see a five in block seven. So that's got to be your other five. And then our last cell is a seven. There are many more ways to solve competitive Sudoku using hidden pairs. Check this video out to see some more examples of that. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching.